the leader of the Save the Youth campaign, the leader of the Life Institute, please welcome Mrs. Nadia Brain.
the greatest injustice in the world, and time will show you are on the right side of history. That should make you proud, and we are proud to stand with you and to stand with 723,632 people who had the wisdom and the intelligence and the courage to vote no to abortion. In God's good time, all of those who stood to protect life will be vindicated. And I want to thank you, all of you from the bottom of my heart, for your tireless, selfless, heroic effort, efforts. You, each and every one of you, were the unsung heroes, not just of the No campaign, not just of the Save the Eighth campaign, but of the past 30 years or more. I have never witnessed such absolute dedication from so many thousands of people. And you should know that you are the lifesavers, you are the champions, you are the heroes. And it is my greatest honor to know you and to stand with you in this most noble fight of all as we work to restore our culture and to protect both mother and child. In his poem, in his poem The Mother, Porrick Pierce wrote, that despite the weariness of much sacrifice, yet I have my joy. My sons were faithful and they fought. You were faithful and you fought. And together we will fight on to restore the beauty that Ireland has lost. And we are forget forever grateful to you and we can never repay you. And you should know that your work was not in vain because two years ago, we were a movement, but now we are a risen people, and risen we shall remain. And we will show the world that we are a people who will overcome, even in the darkest hour, because we know it is always better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. The, the writer J.R.R. Tolkien, in his telling of epic tales of good and evil, made an observation that I think many of us will have felt as we witnessed how abortion campaigners absolutely disregarded the humanity of the living, growing child. Their lack of pity, their lack of mercy towards an innocent human being. And Tolkien said, so much death. What can man do against such reckless hate? And we felt that, I think, on May 25th and in the weeks that followed. What, so much death. What can we as a people do against such reckless hate? Well, we can firstly stand strong, or we can then stand proud, or we can know that in our hearts we are a people of life who seek to love both mother and child. And it is difficult for us to understand how the killing of a child can be cheered and celebrated in Dublin Castle, in the most grotesque scenes possible, overseen by Minister Simon Harris and by Antishak Leo Varadkar. Leo Varadkar, who made a promise that there would be no celebrations for the legalization of abortion, a promise that proved itself to be just one more lie. Because there were many voters who were swayed by the relentless and persistent media lies which convinced the middle ground of the entirely false claim that the Eighth Amendment was killing women. But I think we need to take stock and to recognize that there are others, campaigners and voters, who seem to be driven by that reckless hate, by a cruelty that says, if a child gets in the way, then that child must die. Never before in the history of mankind has cruelty been so effectively dressed up as compassion because real compassion doesn't kill a helpless child. And real compassion seeks to offer women a better answer than abortion. But we are also a people of hope. And it's important to recognize that there is a significant section of Irish society who do not share that reckless disregard for babies and that reckless support for abortion. That the Irish people are not indifferent to the humanity of every preborn child. 
And we know that 33% of us had the wisdom and courage to vote against the cruelty of abortion, and that exit polls showed that at least half of our voters are unhappy with the abortion on demand provisions being proposed by the government. 80% of GPs, of doctors in the South, say they will not acquiesce to Leo and Radcliffe's demands and they will not carry out abortions. It's worth noting, isn't it, that when Leo Varadkar was a doctor, he was pro-life, and as soon as he became a politician, he began his journey to becoming in favor of killing helpless babies. But many of those who voted yes because of a never-ending barrage of media propaganda and lies, and we need to light a path for those people. We need to bring them back to the truth of the pro-life message as we rebuild the culture. And that is what we can do as a people and as a movement against such reckless hate. We can refuse to be cowed. We can stand strong. We can walk tall and we will fight on because a child's life is worth fighting for, because a woman's heart is worth fighting for, and because there is some good in this world and it is worth fighting for. So today, here in Belfast, in this part of Ireland where children are still safe, uh, we take that stand with precious life and with the people of the North so that their light for life will remain burning bright and will keep the path lit for mother and for baby, for all of our people and for the world. We take a stand against the grotesque triumphalism of a grinning Mary Lou MacDonald and Michelle O'Neill, whose poster at the abortion celebrations, exactly, whose poster at the abortion celebrations in Dublin Castle tried to declare the North was next, not as long as we stand in your way. And let's take a minute to thank, give thanks to those who have stood strong despite the political consequences of such reckless hate. Of MP, MLAs like Jim Wells, who you had here today, and Alvin McGuinness, here too with him. Of TDs like Pather Tobin, who said, Pather Tobin, who said his political career was not worth the life of one child. That's integrity. <laughs> TDs like Carol Nolan, like the ever heroic and amazing Matty McGrath, like Mary Butler, like Michael Collins, and like those who continue to stra stand strong even as their political parties try to beat down their right to have a conscience. And let's give thanks, and I'm saying this as a lifelong Republican and a proud Irish woman, let's give thanks too to Arlene Foster, who the day after the referendum, The day after the referendum rightly called out that grotesque display in Dublin Castle and who affirmed the DUP as a pro-life party. Because, here's the truth, in the long history of the world, there have always been many, very often the majority, who capitulate to cruelty and to hate and to the oppression of the most vulnerable and helpless of all. Just like many of our politicians now, there have always been many who took evil by the hand and who embraced the consequences. But standing strong, there have always been, sometimes just a few, who stood for justice and for peace and for real compassion. And it is their names, your names, that will be written in history when we rewrite this wrong and when abortion is banned and made unthinkable. Because in the end, in the end, abortion is an evil that will destroy itself and we will overcome. As Tim Jackson wrote in the day after the referendum, this will not be the last word. While the deconstruction of the island of saints and scholars is nearing completion, the architects in their haste have forgotten to ask, who will inherit this land? Is it those who kill their young 
or those of us who welcome every child as a gift. And so we will fight on. We will fight on, not just in the north, but in the south, a people united, a people together. As long as there is breath in our body, we will stand for life, because this is our land, and we will not rest until it is both north and south, a pro-life light to the world once again. Gurumil Mahagin.